So now we can ask how technological evolution shapes social evolution. So if you go back to our trajectories of technological evolution and progress, this is the telecommunication trajectory, which we saw in the last video. We can see that around here in the 1970s, something qualitatively differently seemed to have happened. Uh, in the trajectory. It seems like telecommunication technology suddenly kind of like hit a wall in the 1970s and weighed straight up in performance. Performance in this case is measured as the number of kilobits per second per US dollar. That is the amount of information you can telecommunicate per dollar that you spend on the technology. And that means here starting in the 1970s you could send a lot more information, communicate a lot more information at a much lower price. And this trajectory here started to grow exponentially. The same you can see very clearly in computation. The performance measure here is computations per second per US dollar. And you can see that in the 1970s, something qualitatively different seemed to have happened, right? It started to hit a wall and go straight up computational power with the microprocessor, the digital microprocessor, these are all of these blue circles here, started to explode, increase exponentially. Now exponential growth, exponential progress is something quite counterintuitive to us. We usually think in linear uh, progress, not an exponential progress. What does exponential progress mean? It means that the growth trajectory is doubling. It's doubling in some interval, be it every two, three, or four, five, ten years. It doesn't really matter. In this case, it's about every two or three years. It's called Moore's Law. Um, and what does doubling mean? It means if we start at a performance of, let's say, two, um, and we double that, we get to a performance of four, right? Okay, the difference is being two. Okay. Now we double the four. We get to a performance of eight. That means we added now four. That's the difference here that we have. Now we have a performance of eight and we double that. We get to a performance of 16. Made eight steps in the medium. Now we double the performance of 16. We get to a performance of 32 and we made 16 steps in the same time interval. So this might be every two or three years. That means during every doubling interval, we make as much progress as we have made since the beginning of the trajectory until now, right? So during this step here, we add 8 to our trajectory, and that is as much progress as we have made from the beginning until here. During this step, we add 16. So that's as much progress as we have made from the beginning until here. We always, during each doubling interval, we add as much as we have accumulated since the beginning of the trajectory. That's what exponential means. So let us have a closer look what that means for the progress of digital technology. Let's go to the 1970s and see what it looked like. So this was one of the first video games. Uh, it's called Pong. It was basically a ping pong game, as you can see, and you could Oh, you could even score, you know, if you were good enough or the other person got too bored. <laughs> so that's an Atari game that you were playing. Um, this was the, one of the first personal computers, the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center uh, computer. And that was the beginning of the era of the digital microprocessor in, 19, in 1972, 1973. Now, a decade later, personal computers became much better. Uh, these were the operating systems here before that, MS-DOS. So when I was in high school, I was taught to, you know, use this. If you wanted to do something on a computer, move something around, you basically had to type instruction and you had to program kind of like. Then in 1985, the first Microsoft Windows came along. That's the version 101, 1985. Big improvement, huge help. Um, then... Pac-Man came along, the first Super Mario game in 1995, a decade later, the first role games came along. This was called Monkey Island. Indiana Jones Sim City was an organizational game. Lara Croft, one of the first uh, video game superheroes, came along. But as you could see at Lara Croft, you know, it wasn't really multimedia yet. Now, a decade and a half later, Lara Croft looked much better. World of Warcraft came along. A different kind of interactive video games, Wii here, for example. 
started to show up and nowadays of course we have these very sophisticated massive multiplayer online games that cost a quarter billion or half a billion dollars to produce that allow us to emerge in these incredible almost real uh, virtual realities and, 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 and play along. So that's the technological progress that we have seen since 1973. Um, and that means exponential growth, exponential progress means that during the next two or three years we will see as much technological progress as we have seen from 1973 until now. That's the amount of technological progress we will add to it. So imagine you would be in 1973 or your parents or grandparents, but anybody who in 1973 was able to predict the digital landscape that we have today, nobody actually did, um, then this person would have the capacity to predict what will happen in the next two or three years because that's the amount of technological progress that we are adding to the equation and that's an incredible amount of progress and um, that as we will see in the next video leads to profound disruptions of the social fabric.